All right, today we are going to go through the steps to download the cell track application and then how to register your device so you can clock in and out for each of your visits with Harmony Home Health. So first what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your application store and simply search for cell track, all one word. As you see here, You've got multiple options here. You're going to want to select the one that simply says cell track. Don't select ones that say 1.7 or test or anything like that. Simply cell track. You'll see it has this little plus right there. So we're going to download that. And once it's finished downloading, you're going to open it. Now you're going to get a pop up here. Would you like to send you notifications? You absolutely want to click allow on that because this is how you're going to communicate with your work. Next is going to ask you for a license ID and authentication code. So the license ID is provided by the office, but it's always 200-528. Your authentication code, which is also provided by the office and always the same, is 6 2 4202. Now your device phone number is your specific phone number. Now this has to be the same cell phone number that you provided the office when you applied. If you're not sure what phone number that we have on file, please make sure to capture that from your local office. Now we're going to click acquire license. And there we go, license acquired to Ateros Health, which is our parent company at Harmony Home Health. Now we're going to complete the registration. So your user ID, this is also going to be provided to you by the office. It's typically a five digit ID starting with a seven. So in this case, my ID, as it appears in NetSmart Home Care, is 74030. And then this is the last name, also as it appears in home care. So this will be provided by your, by your office. Now, if you have any hyphens or um, special characters in your last name, this must be written exactly as it appears in the home care system with your local office. If you are having problems registering at the initially right here, they likely have something in there that maybe you're not aware of in the way that they spelled your last name or typed it into the system. They can make sure to provide you with the proper spelling. We're going to create a password. And then we're going to also have security questions created. These are to help you in case you get yourself locked out. So you'll click on the button. What was your childhood nickname? I'll enter one in. When, what was the name of your high school? And at that point, you just click register user On my particular phone, because I have an iPhone model, it's going to ask me if I want to allow to use Face ID. That's certainly up to you. I prefer to use that as opposed to manually typing in my password every time. This is the very important part right here. This is absolutely key to the success of you being able to clock in or out. Allow CellTrack to use your location. You want to always, while using the app, always allow while using the app. If you do not allow that to work, then the GPS function will not work while you have the app on and your device will not work properly to allow you to clock in and out. You can go back and change that if you forgot to press that button initially, but you must always allow the location functions to work when utilizing the application. So here you have your home screen. 
It's a nice easy layout. You can see up at the top of the screen you have your activities for the day. Here we can see under my activities for the day, I have a patient scheduled at 4.15 p.m. If I click on them, view all, I can get a little bit more information. You can also, this is where you would start your patient. So let's say it's now 4.15. I'm going to go to the patient's home. I'm going to clock in. I'm going to click view all. I'm going to select the patient. You'll see here, I've got it scheduled from 4.15 to 5.15, and I must read the COVID-19 screener. So I'm gonna press start. As you can see, it's gonna pop up and give me a warning because it's not quite yet 4.15. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to continue? I'm gonna click continue for this demonstration purposes. Here you can see that it starts the timer. You always wanna leave cell track running in the background. You can minimize it, but you do not want to close it because this is going to be tracking your time to make sure that you clock in and out properly. Now, let's say I get to the end of my shift and I'm now ready to head home for the day. Well, you can't head home until you've made sure that you've completed all of the care plan and gotten a patient signature. So I'm going to click the finish button here and it's going to ask me to complete any necessary tasks. Now, since I've got a test patient, I don't happen to have any care plans installed, but this is where you would see all of the care plans that need to be done while you're visiting the patient during that discipline. So I'm going to say my visit type was in person. Did you complete any errands during this? No. Are you able to obtain a client's signature? Yes. So here is where the patient's going to sign. We'll click on that pencil. We'll have the patient sign. Click done. You can see there, that's where the patient signed. Signed by the client or patient. We click OK. And then the staff signature, that's your signature. So you'll click on the little pencil and sign your name and click done and then notate any travel exceptions. Um, did you experience any travel exceptions? Uh, no, it was a normal drive for me. Did this activity require any adjustments by the office? No, I clocked in on time, I clocked out on time. If you did have adjustments, you could type yes and say, oh, uh, maybe I forgot to clock in on time, but I was there at uh, four o'clock, but I, was, I forgot to clock in until 4.30. You click yes and leave a note there, at which point the scheduler will reach back out to the patient to verify that correct start time, and they'll make the adjustment in the system before passing it through for payroll processing. In this case, I'm gonna say no. So here now that I've completed everything, I'm gonna click the blue check mark. Uh-oh, and it told me that there's an issue. So here this is showing me something that I forgot to fill out. Did you observe or report any changes regarding the client's condition? Oh, I'm glad they asked that. Yes, their temperature increased. You simply click yes, go to temperature with not within parameters, and then we could complete it. This would actually get, you would want to note, I called my supervisor. And notified them of this temperature increase. Now I click the blue mark. Are you sure you want to finish this activity? We're going to click yes. Okay. Now we're back on the activities and you'll see I have no more scheduled activities for the day. We can click that button to the left and go back to our home screen and then we can view anything else going on. Uh, here you'll see messages if you've got messages sent to you. We can click view all. Here we go. Here's a message from one of our schedulers, Brian. You can see other messages uh, on the screen as well. Run activity summary report. So this is if you want to see how many hours you've worked for the day, yesterday, or a particular date range. We're going to click show report and we're going to see what happened today. So today, based on my demonstration, uh, I worked for three minutes. 
and that was from 150 to 153. So very simple application, very easy to follow. Some of the most important things to remember here is that you will need to clock in and out of each discipline. So if you are scheduled for companion care for the first hour and homemaking for the second hour, at the end of the first hour, you'll need to clock out, get the patient's signature, and then clock back in and start the next activity and clock out again at the end of that one. That is absolutely required at this time. We do have some good news that uh, come Q4, sometime near the end of this year, they are going to be updating that to allow you to only need to clock in and out of the same patient, regardless of the disciplines. But at this time, in order for your time to get calculated properly and submitted to our payers properly, due to the new federal EVV requirements, you do have to clock in and out of each discipline and have to capture a signature of each discipline. So if you're at a patient's home for four hours and there are two different disciplines, you must clock in and out twice according to what your schedule says. So if it says uh, patient Mr. Smith, you're scheduled from one to two with companion care and two to four with homemaking, then after you clock in at one, you need to remember to clock out at two, get the signature, and then clock back into the homemaking task next and complete your visit with him at 4 p.m. capturing another signature from Mr. Smith. Again, this is absolutely required by federal law to clock in and out of each discipline and clock in and out at your patient's home and make sure that it's capturing the GPS of their home location. This is again to ensure the protection of our patients as well as their protection of their rights to ensure that we are truly inside of their home, which is why the GPS is required by the new federal mandates. Thanks so much for enjoying this 